A couple days ago now, two ships were added to the Fantasy Flight Games roster for Star Wars Armada. The Rebel Starhawk, one of the earliest ships introduced by the new canon, comprised at least partially of repurposed Star Destroyer parts, which has finally been given a design by Fantasy Flight Games, having never been depicted before, and the Onager class Star Destroyer, a ship which was introduced in Star Wars The Rebel Files, an in-universe intel book where it was referred to as the Siege Breaker, and has now been given a proper name for Armada. While I've given a bit of information about the two ships and may do a more in-depth video in the future once we know a bit more about them, specific information and some speculation on other possible uses and future appearances for the ships have already been covered by others, including my friend Eckhart Slatter, so I recommend checking out his video as well. Instead today, we're going to be focusing on more of the role that Fantasy Flight Games and their games have played and continue to play not just in the ongoing development of content for new canon, but also for the Legends timeline, which it remains one of the few ongoing sources for. For those who are not familiar, Fantasy Flight Games is a tabletop game company which is currently producing many variations on Star Wars tabletop content. This began with the Star Wars X-Wing fighter-based miniature combat game, and has since expanded into multiple other areas, including a second capital ship-based miniature game called Armada, which is where the Starhawk and Onager we're talking about come from, and they also have several card games, uh, ground infantry and hero-based miniature games, Legion and Imperial Assault, and three core rulebooks for interconnected variations on a tabletop role-playing game sort of similar to Dungeons & Dragons, in Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, and Forces of Destiny, with plenty of expansions for each. Incidentally, I actually do a live campaign every other Sunday in Edge of the Empire on my gaming channel, so if you want to take a look at that and what that's like, there's a link in the description. The buy-in for tabletop miniature games is obviously quite expensive because of the materials involved, so it often remains a pretty niche hobby. But what I'd argue is that even if you're not necessarily into the games themselves, if you like getting new ships introduced and seeing more information about them to the universe, or having older, more obscure ships fleshed out, Fantasy Flight Games is one of, if not the best ways to get that. As I mentioned, because of the nature of the games and how they started, FFG exists in a weird line between canon and legends. A lot of the role-playing games, for example, tend to take place in a Legends context, with Legends ships and vehicles, and as such, with new expansions, they tend to give new information and new designs even for Legends ships. Each new rulebook and expansion tends to come with new sets of stat blocks for vehicles and ships, along with pretty beautiful, if I'm going to editorialize a little bit here, full-page artwork that you're seeing throughout this video, or just artwork on individual ships and vehicle depictions. One major example of this, uh, new information that they provide, is with the Maelstrom class battle, a vessel used by the Republic during the Clone Wars, but which doesn't get much attention anywhere. It was itself first introduced in the Wizard of the Coast Living Force, part of their previous Star Wars tabletop RPG, before Fantasy Flight Games took over that kind of content. When Lead by Example came out, one of the expansions to Age of Rebellion, it came with more information about the class, although we still do lack a design for it. It's not impossible that we'll get one though, since there's an upcoming expansion for the Clone Wars, Collapse of the Republic, which I'm personally hoping will contain artwork, and possibly designations and clarification on a few more Clone Wars era ships and vehicles. A good bit of what the Fantasy Flight games do is also expand on obscure classes from various other games, drawing on games such as Galactic Battlegrounds for example, which had a lot of fairly niche ships that came out quite a while ago and tend to not get brought up in any other sources, for example different variations on the TIE Bomber. One such variation, what is now the TIE Punisher, was expanded by Fantasy Flight Games in this source book Stay on Target, and then expanded even more in the X-Wing miniature game and given a fully fleshed out designation and stats and, be and became a bigger part of the broader Star Wars universe as a result. The Surveyor class is an example of a ship used by the Galactic Empire and designed by Coat Drive Yards, which was introduced entirely in Fantasy Flight Games. Similar things can be said about the miniature games, though they tend to be less divided between Legends and Canon. Ships from either continuity often show up within the same faction, and sometimes that even works as an avenue for content from one universe to make its way into another, especially with the artwork. This game in particular has a strong emphasis on Star Wars Galaxies content, fleshing out and providing more information behind a lot of fighters commonly used by pirates in particular, like the Kirax and the M3A. The games also include artwork of the MC-30C, which you may remember as a ship most prominently featured in Empire War that I don't believe it was introduced there, 
next to the interdictor vessel from Rebels, and another image of it with modified peltas, thereby most likely bringing the MC-30C into the new canon from Legends as well. The X-Wing miniature game was also responsible for the introduction of one of my favorite Imperial ship designs, the Raider class Corvette. While I hope that gets across what I feel is the importance of FFG as one of our best places to get information and depiction of new ships, at least up there with movies and TV shows, but definitely surpassing them for Legends now that everything else has been discontinued. Well, with Marvel Star Wars coming out, that's not necessarily true, and hopefully we'll get more in the future, but for now at least. I do want to take a minute to talk about one detail which should always be taken with a grain of salt with the games, stat blocks. While stat blocks can often give an idea of what type of weapons the ship used and some idea of relative size and other stats like that, the games don't quite always go for a full lore take, and especially with size, the stat used in the game, Silhouette, works on a logarithmic scale, and with numbers there it's often kind of fudged. The stats work on a gameplay over lore basis, which is absolutely fine, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, they are for games after all. Just that people should be careful when trying to gain solid stats for ship to ship comparisons out of the stat blocks for the games. You should probably take them with so much salt it can form its own self-perpetuating Twitch chat. That's all for today though, we'll have another video this weekend on interspecies relationships and hybrid species, as well as a video next weekend talking about George Cardass, and an episode of Tap Calf Transmissions talking about the Darth Plagueis book on Thursday with Eckhart's Ladder. I'm trying to keep the production of videos increasing, and I've been pretty happy with the last couple of videos especially, so I'd value any feedback. If you're enjoying the content, please consider leaving a like or subscribing for more. Thanks for watching!